everybody. What is going on? How is everyone? Who do we got? We got Spencer Neil. Greg is coming in now. The great Neil has returned. Right. <laughs> on in. Patrick She. What's up, brother? We got Paul Myers on here. No way. Paul Myers? Paul Myers is back. To what do we owe the pleasure? Hey, of? hey, hey. There he is. <laughs> Look at him. What's up? How are you like guys doing? 10 years younger than the last time I saw him. <laughs> it's a Canadian thing. The glasses. Yeah, we finally got rid of our snow a couple of weeks ago. It's nice. That's good, man. That's good. Yeah. There's this place in the United States where a lot of Canadians come um, called Florida that you should come visit next year. <laughs> I'm going next year for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right. We got Brian Jones. Look at that Back swag you guys are wearing. I know, man. It's just oh my god, off. so beautiful. Yeah, dangle it. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. <laughs> Sarah Bailey, how are you? We got Ricky. I think Ricky, I spoke to you on the phone the other day. Um, calling from the UK, man. It's good to see you on the call. Um, Vadim, we got our Australian, Mr. Graham. It's good to see you guys. Where's your where's your t-shirt? You need to check at customs, Graham. The Australians aren't letting stuff in right now. We'll have to send you one over the pond there. And then we got Amber. Okay, cool. It's it's good to see you guys on here. Um, let me see if we can actually live stream a meeting for once. Give it another try. We'll keep trying every week. All right, who's got some wins? Who did something cool in the last seven days to move their business forward? Press record. Subscribe. Press record also, Patrick. It is recording. Cool. Um, I'll go. All right, Sarah, what do you got? Um, okay, so I'm not on camera at the moment. Um, but a cool thing happened. I went on a Lake Norman Chamber of Commerce outing to tour a couple businesses in the area. And um, two out of the three people um, that we visited both agreed to do the Eugene Review interview with me. So that um, is coming up. I'll be calling them tomorrow to um, get that set up. And one of them is like a performing center of the arts that's being built. It's a huge multi-million dollar thing and they, they want to talk. So uh, that's good. And the other one is like a parking awesome, yeah. yeah, kind of deal. And then um, I got another website built yesterday. So uh, yeah. I'm Sounds like good. you're picking up some steam. A little bit. Yep. That's, uh, that's great to hear. Um, it's awesome to um, see you. I know that you kind of had to start from scratch and start over. So it's yeah. cool to kind of get those first few wins in the book. I know that Mr. Paul Myers there has had a lot of express, ex, uh, um, a lot of success with those. I think he doesn't do the chamber of commerce. I think he does. Paul, you do the B and I meetings, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. B and I, I think he's been crushing it for a while with those things. Um, hey, well, it Paul, sounded like you had a conversation. Uh, Hey, um, if we chat on Messenger, Paul, is that cool? Yeah, by all means, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I love the Chamber of Commerce and the group that I went on that tour with is um, a leadership group. They only allow 25 people in and there are a thousand people in the, this Chamber of Commerce. And I love it. Like now that like it's, you know, I'm finally starting to move on after the Dave, after Dave, my Pat, uh, Dave Star has passed and my partner. So finally finding my feet, sea legs a little bit. And um getting social again so you guys have to stop me if i talk too much because i'm like the worries, only we're, yeah. in group right now we're like anyway so i'm done but paul i'll message you um thank you thanks yeah paul paul is super helpful with everyone um hey can anyone does anyone see us act if we're streaming in the group i'm not i'm not seeing it show yeah, up i don't see it patrick I was about to and, okay let's try this a different way let's just go right to facebook maybe and see if we can get it who else uh who else has some wins I got a big one for myself. <clears throat> yeah. What do you um, got? I got uh, a client who has uh, nine GMBs, nine websites. It's actually my biggest uh, client so far. Um, moving them over, web hosting as we speak. Um, Going to be a build out of the websites, a rebuild, and then some SEO. So 
on a monthly recurring basis is going to be about nine grand for me. Holy uh, cow. With the builds and whatnot, that's going to be another, you know, three to four, uh, you know, one offs. But as a monthly recurring fee, man, super excited. It's oh. taken me a while, but the mindset, momentum, and really just the, the winners around me, you know, Graham, Spencer, I've been seeing what Paul's doing. Uh, Patrick, all you guys, Jeff, uh, super excited for me. Super, super. Um, what do they call it? Um, life changing money. You know, I'm That's super awesome. Excited. Man. I'm so glad to hear that. That's yeah, awesome. you can kind of hear it in in the tone, uh, <laughs> kind of the the surprised, warm tone of how you deliver this. You know, it's it's um, it's it's this is one of my favorite moments. I know that um, you know every week, I I wish that we would get more activity on this part of it, but hearing stuff like this, especially this type of win, man, it just, it really makes, you know, we're not charging anything to be in this group, right? And when we hear this type of win, it makes it worth it. It makes it feel like what we're doing is, is, uh, is really having an impact. And that's why we're in here doing this. So Alfredo, I know that you've been in here um, like every week, pretty much. And uh, that, I mean, that's, that's a huge raise, right? that's you, you, with that, that's a six figure race, right? $9,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So if you weren't at six figures before, you certainly are now, man. So, um, Stokes, I'm yeah. stoked. Thank you. Very cool, man. Um, all right. Who else, who else has got some wins? A small one. Yeah. That's, that's tough to follow right there. You know, um, I, I picked up a couple of uh, new clients and, and I actually went through, you know, the group again, and I was checking out some of the old videos and just to try things from a different perspectives. And I went into, uh, I got one client through Facebook and, and that client, it was great. I, I called them and I said, Hey, do you do bathroom remodel in Santa Rosa? And he said, we specialize in bathroom remodels in Santa Rosa. And as soon as he said that with enthusiasm, I'm like, that was like the best answer, the <laughs> best way you could have answered that. I'm like, I want him as a client. We just, we hit it off. So he's good. And I got another one through a referral from another client that we just didn't, it wouldn't work between us, but I've kept in touch with him. We kind of hit it off and I got a really good client through him. I've gotten two clients through him, even though I'm not doing business with him. You know, but he's a contractor. He knows everybody in the area. And so, yeah, it's, I've done that. And then uh, I think that was it. And I've got three GMBs to stay too. So. Awesome, man. That's a good week. Yeah, that's a, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff moving there for you. Uh, we're actually going to talk today. Today's topic that I'm going to work on is, is a lot towards like um, finding clients, the whole monetization um, strategy, uh, the different um, some, some different things to consider as well as some ways to kind of reach out to clients and, and, um, or to, to prospects and, and some of the stuff that's worked for, for Jeff and I in the past. So, um, do we have any final wins before we get into kind of the meat and potatoes? I've got two. Who's that? Uh, Ryan, Ryan Jones? Yeah. What's up, man? How are you? So, good, good. Um, so again, it's referral networking, uh, B2B group I'm in, um, it seems like all our business comes through referrals. Um, so uh, both of them are pretty much like the same type of deals, $3,000 upfront projects each, and then $1,000 a month each recurring. One's in the electrostatic painting niche, and one is like a reward card niche. So, um, you know, people brought up uh, networks and referrals it's it's huge and i know i talk to people about it and not a lot of people do it or want to do it but it definitely works whether it's bni or you know there's, there's tons of business groups out there and i just happen to be in one that's a business to business only so there's no painters or plumbers or anything like that it's all business to business referrals so if you can find a group like that it's golden yeah that's super cool i'll tell you almost all of our business has come from referrals Right. Yep. Like with, well, where we are now, like it, it's been a long time where, um, uh, where it's been like, where we've been just been prospecting a lot and trying to find all these clients. A lot of times, like uh, I was talking to Jeff, Jeff was with me last week here in Florida. And we're like, I think we need to like stop taking on clients for a while and just like focus on 
trying to monetize some of the stuff we have, you know, just like you guys, um, we go through our kind of like spikes and plateaus and um, we have so, we get so many referrals that if, if we were able to fulfill, then we could grow faster. But sometimes you have to retool your business a little bit to, so that you can go fast again. And that's kind of where we are with our agency right now. And, uh, but the referrals, they continuously come in. Once you reach, like if you get to 52 clients and a, a, one client gives you a referral once a year, then you have a client every week, essentially. Right. And then yep. like, if you get over that, then you're going to have more than one a week, right? So um, the referrals are huge. And really what it, there's like two two kind of pieces to it is like one, do a good job for your client, right? And, and two, like occasionally ask for it. If they compliment you, they say that like, hey, I can't believe this. You're like, this is a great opportunity to follow up with an ask and be like, uh, I'm so happy that that you um, are getting such value from our service. Do you know anyone else that might be interested in it? Right. It's like they'll get, they'll like when you get someone to that mindset, they'll dig through their black book to try to find someone to help you because you've meant so much to them. Right. So um, doing those two things and you'll have like an endless supply. And, and usually the people they refer to you are going to be like vetted by them. So right. they're going to be somebody that's like good at what they do that has a, a business and, and they're trustworthy and they're just like they're not right because they don't want to refer someone that way. All right. So one, so, um, one, thing, one more thing um, that I've learned is a lot of clients, um, they, they don't really, sometimes they don't want to refer you because they think you only have so much bandwidth and that you really have to tell them that you're looking to grow because, you know, they want to keep you to themselves and they figure if they, if, you know, if you get too many clients, your service is going to go down. Right. So you got to let people know I'm looking for, I'm looking for growth, you know. Because people can, some people are very protective of you <laughs> if you're doing a good job for them. So it's yeah, kind of fun. absolutely, especially within their own market, right? Yeah. 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 Um. Okay. Cool. Congrats on those, Brian. That's awesome. Um. Do we got any other wins? What's up, guys? Spencer can't wins. Can't get through a win session without this guy. Man, dude, I feel like I'm living a freaking dream. I honestly do. Like this, this shit is so so real. Once you start hitting these highs. Um, I thought I was a workaholic prior and now I'm just, man, I'm just working on this, this high. So, uh, since last call, we closed $12,300 of all new money. Um, 6,600 coming from a referral. If we're talking about that, I had a guy start renting a deck and fence site from me, talked to his roofing buddy, his roofing buddy wasn't happy with his marketing services and closed that $6,600 deal, deal yesterday. Uh, 2k from GMB stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Got my first payment from my roofing partner down in Atlanta, Georgia. Slow month, but they're building up a little $2,200 month payment in my pocket and uh, $1,500 in reoccurring on a rank and rent site uh, we rented out. So uh, it's once, once this stuff starts rolling in, you guys, you guys just, it's like, it's like surfing. It's unreal. So, and also in a position as those that got to see in the group, I was in a position now, I mean, and, and, and mindset wise that I don't want to work with people that are assholes and was able to just be like, you know what, dude, this isn't, this isn't working uh, with this painter that we built the site for and, and we walked away from that deal. And he was, his response was, wow, really? I said, yeah, man, like this isn't working. This isn't a good fit. <laughs> you narcissist. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's uh, they're so used to marketers that are just like constantly hounding them when you step away and we did this in uh, our client in, in grand rapids a couple months ago where like it was hard to collect payment on this guy and it was just like he would go dark for a little while and then we would find him again and eventually we're just like we're cutting you off and and it was like a complete shock to him like he didn't think that was in our playbook at all right and and i think it's a really good thing to to introduce that early on if you've got a problem client to um to to like set the tone i, I mentioned this before we did this on, we have we have a guy in in um chicago and he kept trying to circumvent jeff and go to me because the initial referral was was to me so i kind of did most of the sale and then i said hey you know jeff's our client manager he's going to take over and he kept coming to me and and that's you know after the fourth or fifth time, I was like, dude, I have this person in, in place here. 
you know, I'm, I've got all these other things going on. I'm paying this person to do what you're, you keep calling me. You got to go to him. He's like, I want to, I want to talk to a decision maker. I'm like, Jeff is a decision maker. He's going to funnel things up. And, 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 and I was like, if this isn't going to be a good fit with this, he's like, no, 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 it's cool. But then he continued. And when he called me the next time, I was like, dude, all right, let's do this. I'm going to give you a refund for like the last four months for everything you've paid. I don't think this is a good fit. I've got stuff in here and it, it seems like you, you need to work with a business owner who, who you can talk directly to. And our business has grown to where this is impossible. So I'm happy to refund this and no hard feelings. And he's like, all right, all right, all right. And then it's probably been, um, a year, maybe eight months. I don't know. I, I've never heard from him again. He talks to Jeff. So you've got to set that tone. It's just kind of like, it's like a relationship when you get in, right? Like the, the, the way that you set up the beginning parameters are going to operate and that's going to be what the expectations are. So you have to set that stuff early. You've got to really set the tone or these, these clients will get the wrong idea and it can be hard to move them um, because they, they view you kind of as this like combination of growth where they like, Hey, you weren't this way before. And it's like, but when you, when you come in strong like that, it changes the whole dynamic for the entire relationship. Right. So. Um, yeah, and, the, and the one thing I, I will say on this is, is with this growth, you guys, there's obviously the wheels are starting to come off in some places, which I'm absolutely thankful for. Uh, one of the things was, is that we skipped a little bit of our, our, our SOP on this we already had him set up to start taking phone calls. So we just automatically turned on the phone calls to this guy. Um, and I was doing my best by coaching him. But the one thing that Patrick always preaches is if these dudes aren't answering their phone, they're not closing deals. I took back that control um, because we'd sent 17 phone calls to him and majority of them were going unanswered. And, and uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. Within like the first couple of days, we ended up like just capturing all the leads because we're now filtering through an answering service. Um, so I was able to present to him like, hey, man, you're screwing up. Like you're, you're not taking your calls. He wouldn't change his voice message to something generic. He just kept saying no, 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 basically. And I was like, no, nah, this isn't going to work because if they don't see the value initially, they're never going to pay you guys. So this guy wasn't even paying for, you know, probably 40 to $60,000 of the work I sent him for free. So they also I'm, don't understand, man, that they're your, your customers. They're not his customers. They're your customers. Yeah. And he needs to take care of them. I always set that framework up with them too. It's like, man, you better cherish these guys, right? Because I work really hard. I work my ass off to get these guys and they're mine. And I'm giving you the honor of looking after them. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's, I think, you know, after their pain, it's a little bit different, but this guy, you know, just did, there was no motivation. Um, I, I heard how he talked to the home advisor guy, which, I mean, I get it. It's home advisor, but just pretty disrespectful of a person. And I'm better than that. You know what I mean? I just, I, I, I moved on and I, like, uh, we were away for this weekend, um, to the beach enjoying the weekend. And this like was kind of bugging me and Jen just encouraged me. She's like, from day one, this guy's giving me problems. Like, what are you keeping him around for? So it, hopefully you guys all have supported people in your corners as well, like 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 I do, in order to, to to push through some of this crap. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, and and it's yeah, Spencer. How much easier, like you can kind of see the impact of this decision, but this decision is a lot easier to make to kind of like tell someone like, hey, this isn't a good fit when you've got money coming in, and and for some of the, it it seems that way. A lot of it, a lot of it is perception, right? To kind of walk away from this person, but this guy's not paying anyway. So you're not really walking away from anything. And like, I, th I think we kind of like, we're desperate to make that first money. And we end up at the beginning, we take like bad deals or we like hang on to clients that, that are, are maybe not great clients. Um, so congrats. Well, on, the thing ahead, too is we, we, we pre-sold the site at 1500 a month. Um, and, and we're just kind of guessing what the volume is going to be. Um, I wasn't going to charge them until we start producing stuff. Now I know the site's producing because we have the answering service. And now I'm in talks with another contract for 2K a month. So I just gave myself a raise by walking away, you guys. Like, like honestly, there's, there's, this is consistently winning on this. The guy was supposed to paint our house. Um, he, when I fired him, our other contractors are doing some work. We're like, hey, we do painting on houses. I was like, wow, guess what? Let's, let's get a bid. You're hired. You know, so it's like, 
it, it's all going to work out guys. I know it seems like huge decisions when you're doing this. I know if you're not even making, you know, four or $5,000 a month or a couple grand in this to walk away from a $1,500 deal, but this is a huge headache that I just solved. And it like, I was able to enjoy the rest of my weekend as well. So <laughs> it was a win. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, this, this, this time that you get back from not having to deal with this situation, it, like, you know, you, you don't, you don't want to put yourself in that, like where it, it's like worse than a job almost where it's like, someone's like calling you and like, just it's yeah. Once you make that decision, once you'll never be in that situation again, where you're going to like have to deal with this. All right. I want to make sure that we have time for what I have planned and what I prepared. So I'm going to jump into this stuff. First, I want to talk about um, some of this stuff you guys are already going to know. Some of this is intuitive, but I want to go through it and I want to get it clear because it's really important when we go and we, we start to close deals on how we structure things. All right. So the Zoom window, like it always does, has disappeared. Uh, Jeff, give me a thumbs up can, or, or let me do it. Jeff, can you see my screen? We good? Okay, cool. All right, guys. So what I have here is I've got some different um, payment plans that we can set up with our clients across the bottom. You can see I have like commission, paper, lead, flat fee, hybrid, arbitrage, flipping it. Um, there's actually another one we could probably add on here, like consultant. That's something can you that's- the view, Patrick? I can. Yep. Please. Um, this way. How's that? Is that good? Oh. Or- All right, cool. All right. So a lot of you guys, when you first get started, what you, what you guys want to do is you want to do commission, right? It's the easiest one. It's what business owners are going to recommend when we kind of pitch this business model because it's, there's no risk for them. And, and it's almost like there's, there's negative risk. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second. So uh, an example of this is, hey, I'm going to give you 10% of the jobs that I close, right? So the pros are, this is easy to sell because there's no, there's no risk, right? Um, for the business owner, they're going to be, they're going to be open to this all the time because it's just like, hey, I'm going to give away a percentage of some money that I wouldn't be getting. Okay. The, another pro is that you can get some big paydays out of this. Like if they close a hundred thousand dollar job and you're getting 10%, then you can get $10,000, right? So um, I know that Jeff is an attorney, which has kind of allowed him to gives him the potential for some like fee splitting things. So if he were to um, do that, it's a different scenario because attorneys have this um, like oath, right? There's like a, there's, there's an oath where um, they can't be violating this, this like not paying you or not saying, and there's like a record of, of jobs getting closed. But when the guy is a plumber and like, who knows what happens after he calls these people back. And, you know, one of the things that this is how I started, right? When I first started, I was doing commission. I was, I, I didn't know how to sell and I was like scared and I was um, kind of like afraid to put my foot down with the business owner. And, and frankly, I was just happy that they were talking to me and that they were considering to pay me at some future point for what I was providing to them. Um, so the, the cons, it's harder to manage. It's harder to track. Um, it can be harder to scale. So the reason that it's harder to scale is if you, let's say you've got like 10 leads a month coming in and it's easy for you to understand that. But what happens when you have 4,000 leads coming in a month and you've got to go through and say like, okay, did this one close? Did this one close? Did this one close? For those of you guys that have been in the, um, in the business for a little while, um, you'll realize a lot, especially like the contractors, a lot of them are disorganized. So when you are in a commission deal, who is going to lose when someone is disorganized? You're going to lose, right? If they're disorganized or if they're dishonest, you're going to get, you're going to pay for that because when they're disorganized, you're going to be like some of the time they're going to forget that, oh, that one did close, right? And it also, one other con is um, this, this can create a contentious relationship with the client. Because you're constantly asking them, did you close this one? Did you close this one? It's just like that back and forth for months and months and you having your doubts, whether they're being honest with you will kind of show up in your tone. Um, it's hard to predict your income too. Like if you want to say like, hey, I want to make $10,000 a month, and it, you don't know how many jobs you're going to close, right? What if they get sick? That's another thing. It's like, it's out of your control to some extent once the lead goes through, right? Um, as I mentioned, you have to trust the business owner. 
So this is commission. It can be great. You've got, I've got one commission business owner. It's somebody that, that I know and trust, right? So um, he's paid us for years. I trust him. He's done a great job. I think he's a really honest person, but I avoid this one for me. And, I, and that's just me. It can work for you guys, but this is, I, I don't like to have to deal with this. Um, the guy, the first one that, that I um, signed up with where we did commission, um, he crushed it the first month. And then the second month, I couldn't get a hold of him, but he was answering our, our calls. Like I could hear the recordings of the calls. And then like we sent him, um, you know, like 65 calls and he didn't send me a check the second month. And then the third month, I like kept trying to reach out for him. And then I cut him off and I sent it to a new person and it was like, close, 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 close. And, you know, I moved on from that. And then eventually we said, hey, we're not doing this commission after that experience um, with the exception of that one person. All right, paper lead. So an example of this would be like, hey, for every lead that I send over, uh, you give me $50. So one of the challenges that you might run into with the tracking of this is like, what's a lead and what's not a lead? So if you choose this one, you really need to have a clear um, explanation of what this, like what, it, what qualifies as a lead. So for us, when we've done this in the past, some of the stuff that we consider, are they asking about your service? Are they, um, is it in the area that, that you are in? If it's not a lead because the contractor is booked out, that, that's a lead. That's not on me. That's on their ability to manage the business. If it's not a lead because um, they're trying to charge too much, right? That's like, that's, that's your own, own thing, right? So any of that stuff, you need to lock that down and make sure that it's very clearly decided on what actually is a lead. Um, it, just like the other one, if you have, what do you, if you have 4,000 leads coming in a month, this can be hard to manage, right? And again, the, the revenue can be unpredictable. Um, it is a, it's easier to sell because the first one with commission was no risk. This one's less risk, right? So they're only going to pay when um, they get when they get um, when they get a lead, right? So they're going to be more open to that. What I would recommend if you guys choose to go with this model is to get them on like a um, when you first start. Don't give them 30 days with their leads when they've never paid you before, and then expect them to come and pay you. Like when you start out, put them on a weekly. Say, okay, we're I'm gonna we're gonna reconcile every Friday, and then you've got to. What I would do is I would go into Lead Snap. And I would export the stuff that they they have. So export, you can export the phone calls now. I don't know if you guys were aware of that. We overlooked that. That is now a function in there. You can export all the phone calls. You can export all the form submissions and send those over and say, hey, this is what I am charging you for. When you do that, I would recommend taking notes on any, like putting, providing as much information as possible to them. What's the caller's name? If they gave their address, any details about the the, the quote or the job that they're looking to have done, put that in there so that it's, um, they know that they know exactly what it is. And there's no question mark of you, if, if you're trying to um, assign more leads than, um, you know, than, than they actually had. All right. So this one is my favorite one. And this is what we have for almost all of our clients. This is the flat fee. So example would just be, Hey, it's a, it's a thousand dollars a month. The way that you would do this is you're going to look at the leads that are coming in. You're going to look at the um, the value of the leads, which we'll talk about. We talked about that last week. So we really rely a lot on like the, the home advisor sheet, which is inside the Facebook group. So with that, you could say, okay, in this niche, it's forty dollars, right? And I'm sending twenty five leads a month, so that's going to be a thousand dollars a month, right? So some of the benefits of this: predictable income, right? Um, you don't have to necessarily trust the business owner. Um, we always take the money before we deliver the service. So if we, we'll give them free, free uh, leads as a, as a trial, but once they commit, then we're gonna build them. And then if they don't pay, like we'll, we'll, cut, their lead, <clears throat> we'll cut their leads off, right? If, you, if they haven't paid, it's like the seventh of the month and we charge them the first, then like we have the ability to like shut it down and find somebody else really quickly, <clears throat> right? I think this is the easiest to manage and the easiest to scale, which is why we went in this direction. I think, at numbers, maybe you're making less per lead than some of these other ones, but at the same time, um, we're able to um, make more, we make it back because it's easier to manage. I'm not paying someone to go and listen to all the calls. I'm not, I'm not having to deal with like contentious relationships with the clients. I'm able to focus on finding a new person. Jeff, can you mute out whoever that, you got them? Okay, cool. All right, so this is gonna be the hardest one to sell. 
Okay, so this is the, the cons, right? It's, it's gonna be the highest risk for the business owner. But I think when you kind of do that once you punch them, give them the free leads first, like try it, try it out for, and I would, I would essentially like maybe double the sales cycle. So this is why for niche selection, a lot of times I push like a sales cycle that is like around a week or something, right? Because the person can close some jobs and get money coming in before you have the conversation about whether it's worth it for them to pay you for this, right? So, um, but it is a higher risk. Hey, deliver than like, what are you going to do? So we've had that situation happen. Um, recently, we've had, we've like, some of our assets have not been performing as well. And we've been making some adjustments. We grew too fast, right? We like, kind of like had too much going on. And usually when this happens, we're like, okay, we're going to discount the next month, right? We're like, hey, sorry, you're paying $1,000 a month. We felt like we didn't deliver enough last month. So this next month's going to be $500 and we're going to go back to normal. Um, as I mentioned, this is the hardest to close. Another con is that you still have to track this. Like you still have to pay attention. You can't just like completely put this on autopilot. Um, some of the functions that we're building into LeadSnap, we're going to make this a lot easier because we have like automated reporting um, and, and like qualifiers on both calls and form submissions. So I think um, this will be further reduced through here. Um, we're also kind of building in the ability to get a um, average lead cost for each of your clients and in different niches. So that way you can kind of know like, hey, I might be off pace for based on what this person's charging. All right, so hybrid. All right, so hybrid is some examples would be like, so this is mixing a couple of these different in there together. And this can be a, a great strategy. Um, this would probably be my, maybe my second favorite one. Um, so an example of this is like, it's going to be $500 a month plus $10 a lead. So you start to get some predict some predictability in there and you're kind of like splitting the risk a little bit with the business owner, right? Where they're paying some, so it can be easier to close. So this can be really good. Another example would be $500 a month plus 10% of closed jobs. Again, that's going to require some trust of the business owner, right? Which, um, you know, unfortunately I'm a, I'm, I'm a very trusting person, but in this business model, I am not. Like I'm, I'm, I've seen it, I've heard stories. It's just nonstop. Um, so I don't, I, I kind of stay away from like the commission split stuff because it's just, it seems really hard unless you're in, unless you're in an industry where it's easier to kind of check, fact check on this stuff. Um, there is more tracking than just a straight flat fee, right? Because like if you're mixing together a pay for lead or a commission, then like, hey, you've got to, you got to know your numbers and you, you should know like, okay, these people should be closing a third of it. Here's their average job cost. Then like, what should I be owed based on what has been sent over this month, right? It could require using calls or having like a virtual assistant go through and listen and list off the type of job so that you can get a better understanding. How many appointments did they book? This type of thing. Um, and again, as I mentioned, it, it usually requires some, um, some, some level of trust with the business owner. Okay. So this, this next one is, I think an awesome one. I personally haven't done it by radar. This is kind of like on my to-do list. Um, arbitrage. So this is essentially where you're typically kind of like a, um, you know, if, if you think of like a general contractor, they're not like doing the concrete and running the electric and running the plumbing. They're like subcontracting these things out, right? So this could be, there have been a number of people that, um, that, I, that I've done coaching for that I've started these, um, these things. Um, Adam McChesney is one. He was at a couple thousand dollars a month and now he owns like a windshield company. I think Spencer just took 12% of a roofing company. Um, so I know that uh, Neil here comes from owning an artificial grass company. So it's basically using this, this stuff. And I think that this is the most profitable way to do it, right? This is, this is the one that's gonna put the most money in your pocket but there's definitely some cons. It's going to be harder to manage, right? A lot of times this is going to require a license. Like you can't just um, start like selling like plumbing. You can't like have, if, if plumbing, if a plumbing license is required in Dallas, which I, maybe Texas is because they don't require a license for anything. If, if plumbing, if a license is required in Los Angeles, you can't just have your brother go over and start fixing toilets and doing like licensed plumbing services, right? So you need to think about that. Um, you can still get this stuff in place. And ultimately, we're kind of we're like the, the, the way that, that I've been training and teaching has been to be the middleman, 
And this is like kind of removing yourself to some extent from the middleman where you're actually managing the business. But the upside potential of this is huge, right? And there are certain businesses that I think would be um, better candidates for this. Like I wouldn't want to do it in plumbing, but maybe like a um, bounce house, bounce castle rental type place where it's requiring like the rental of something or like chairs or, you know, for, for weddings. We had talked, I think it was about three or four weeks ago, we talked about the water where I, if one books a wedding, you know that they're going to need a dress and they're going to need a DJ and like chairs and like a cake and all these different things, right? So this, if you chose a rental one, there could be several other businesses that you could tie onto this. So arbitrage could be very strong with this. I think that it is, um, it, it might be scary for you. And maybe this isn't what you do in, in like the first round, right? Like maybe you kind of get some wins under your belt, you get some money coming in and then you can use that. And, and it's not such a big risk for you to do this. If some of you guys are coming from, um, some of you guys come in from like uh, running a business and you wanted to learn this stuff and then you like realize how awesome of a business model this is and you're going to kind of apply this to your own business. So you've kind of got that arbitrage already. Uh, there is obviously more risk and more liability to this. You, But um, I'll tell you that not you learn from, from taking on something like this. Like for me, like starting LeadSnap and starting this, I came from, being a software engineer and building the product, learning how to do marketing and kind of like combining them and then building out like a commercial product that, that I can market to all these people. I've learned so much from this, like what an amazing experience. And, and that is huge for whatever I do in the future, in my opinion, right? I can start another software company with other products. Now I've got this kind of experience. There's so many things I would teach myself if I could go back. So don't roll this one out but maybe like keep it in your back, back pocket. Um, you could also, I mean, you, you could essentially almost run an Uber model of this too. Like you could, you could easily do this for something like house cleaning where you've got some, some kind of like a stable of house cleaners, you're taking the payment and then you're saying like, hey, it's gonna be you know, $250 for this. And then, hey, I'm gonna pay you, um, you know, $80 to go and, and clean this house for four hours or something like this, right? So that kind of model is awesome. All right, so flipping it. All right, so this is where you basically build out these assets that are worth something and then you just sell them, right? So you're not running this like um, recurring cash flow model. This can be really good to get some, some money in your pocket, but I personally hate this. I've had a lot of business owners offer me a lot of money for, um, for some of our assets, you know, uh, but like what they're going to do is they're going to pick a multiplier based on, on, on um, like what it's creating. And that might be 10 or 12. So that would be like in a year, you would recoup what you've paid or what you received. Right. But then, so like, for instance, one of, one of my first ones um, was a telling site. Like it was my very first site. I built a telling site and I've been collecting a thousand dollars a month for six years. Right. If the person wanted to pay and, and by all means, it looks like it's, I'm going to collect $1,000 a month for the next six years and, and beyond, right? So if I were to sell that for $12,000, look at all I'm missing out on. But you can get kind of that big payday, right? Um, there's no long-term management. You don't have to deal with clients, right? There's, uh, it's like I mentioned, it's less, less money. You have to restart every time you sell one of those. Got to like start the whole process over. You may not have to worry about managing a team so much. And, and all this, once you've sold it, kind of, it's like, um, you know, buyer beware. You, I don't, I don't have this like future responsibility to ensure all this stuff. And it's not, it's not really cash flow. It's like a, it's like a one-time hit, right? Okay, cool. Does anybody have, before we go on, I've got a number of questions that I'm going to go through, uh, but I just want to kind of clear the slate here. Does anyone have any questions on any of these models? Hey, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, Sarah dropped a message with four different questions. And I don't know if it's easier for you to just go back into the chat and look at her if you want to just round, uh, sound them off one by one or how do you want to do that? You well, want me to drop them into questions? There was one question. Like, I see it. Um, yeah. Okay. All, right. um, all of these things. Okay. I think all of these things are stuff I'm going to cover in a little bit. Um, I've got these questions already listed because um, I've predicted those, but my what I want to focus on right now with, with the questions is, does anyone have any questions about, um, not about like collecting payment and this type of thing, but these models, 
Is there anything that wasn't explained clear or you're uncertain how any of these work? I'm happy to answer those. I'm gonna go into, I've got a list of questions that, that I think you guys will ask um, about here. like collecting payment and that type of stuff. Question? Yeah, Edwin, what do you got, man? So uh, with the flat fee, uh -huh. uh, do you promise a uh, certain amount of leads or how do you determine when to rain? Like you mentioned that if you feel that you didn't produce enough lead for a month, you kind of give him like a discount or maybe a month uh, off or something like that. So uh, do, when you're talking to the client, do you promise, okay, certain amount of leads or how you go about that? I try to, I try to avoid that for the most part because um, I don't like really having these guarantees. They almost always seem like they're one way guarantees where it's like the person is compl going to complain this month if they don't like get X amount of leads, but they never say anything when, you know, the busy time of the year rolls around and they get way more than that. Um, we say, this is what we expect. And this is what, this is what we're seeing, right? These are yeah. the, um, the amount of leads that we're seeing. Um, but I, I try not to guarantee it. And, and there are a few clients that we kind of have this, this um, agreement where it's like, Hey, this person gets 40, 40 leads a month. And, you know, it's, it also creates more management when you do that, where you're like guaranteeing a number, because then like, what happens if you, you say, Hey, I'm going to send you 30 leads a month. And then you have 50, what do you, you got to go like find another person, but then you may not have 50 every month. And, and then it's like, so sure, it, yeah. it puts you yeah. kind of in a weird situation. Yeah. I understand that. So, but how do you determine then when do you need to kind of give him a discount? Usually. I'm going to give them a discount when they complain, if if oh. it's justified, right? We we had one guy that called us and said, um, you know, hey, I, I I'm not getting I'm not getting what I'm paid for. I'm not getting any leads, and we're like looking at him. Uh, we went through and looked, and he had a like in in a, in a niche where it's like the, the the service is expensive. He had like 180 phone calls, and he answered like seven of them. There's like 173 phone calls that he had missed and he's complaining and, and he's like, Hey, I'm not, I'm not closing any of these. I'm like, you're not answering the phone. And I, I brought it up. We got on a zoom call and I showed it to him. So for, for that one, I was like, I'm not, I'm not giving you a, a, a discount. Or I think actually on that one, um, what we did is we, he had, he didn't have any money because of that, because he wasn't answering the phone. So we allowed it. We like floated him for one month and then he made it back up. And, and I was like, dude, you, you need to get a receptionist in here and have somebody answering the phone. So you need to look at it at a case by case basis. Uh, one of the things we're doing in our agency right now is I've hired and, and it, it's like one of the biggest learning experiences of the last 12 months for me is, I don't know why it took so long, but I, I hired somebody that all they do is recording. Like they're just going through and they're like getting all of our numbers from all these different places and making sure that we stay ahead of this. Like where, like we need to know before it's um, before the client tells us, right, that that there's an issue. So, um, I think does that answer your question, Edwin? Yeah, yeah, it kind of, yeah, because uh, yeah, I was <laughs> trying to because there's some niches that when it's December, January, you know, the 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 leads are, are not the same amount like if you are in the summer, like landscaping or or things like That's that. Right. So I was wondering, how are you gonna do? with the customer when he starts complaining, hey, I'm not getting any leads. Yeah, but the, yeah. It's, it's so, the, so how do you, what do you say? <laughs> yeah, so exactly, and what we do a lot because we have um, one of the niches that we're in is seasonal and you can look at like, hey, so so let's, let's this is a classic scenario, right? So let me stop sharing for one second. So it's busy during the summertime, the springtime and the fall, and then it dies in the winter. So, um, you can say, hey, this is what we've sent over the last 12 months. And this is the average cost. This is the average leads. And we have people that are like, hey, um, when, the, when the winter rolls around, they start complaining. And we're like, okay, um, if you want to do it this way, we can discount it. But then it's instead of being like $1,500 a month during the spring, it's going to be $4,000 a month during the spring because you're getting a lot more leads. So if you're getting a discount in the spring, then you need to pay for the winter. And if not, then like, you know, we're, like we're going to charge you more in the spring. So like, we're not going to lose. 
And, and the good thing is that the spring fall is the winter. So if they want to try to like take this discount or whatever, because they're not getting as much during the winter, then like, as soon as that comes around be like, okay, now we're at hundred leads a month. So this is what it's going to be, or we can sell you 40 leads a month and we're going to find someone else to sell the other 62. Right. So that's kind of our strategy. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have one more, but I don't want to take the time. I don't know if there's more people asking questions, so I can wait. So, all right, let's let's circle back to you in in, okay. um, in just a minute, and I want to make sure that I get to some of these other ones. But I'd sure. love to, and, and if for whatever reason we don't get to it, just post it in the group, and I'll I'll personally respond to it. Okay, thank you. You, yep, yeah, you're welcome. All right, to do this, I think a better way to do this. Let me jump into the questions that I've written down, so that way we can eliminate these. Okay, so when to start charging? Um, oops, I'm not sharing anymore. All right, so. When should we start charging, right? That's, I think, a question that a lot of you guys are going to have. And, and the answer is obviously as soon as possible. But what does that mean? Um, it depends what model you pick, right? So now that we've got kind of our models established here, this could be a good way to get in the door, like the paper lead one. But it is important that you that you kind of like set the stage. If you're going to take one of the, if you want to move to a flat fee, which is what we do all the time, because we'll like, we don't start off as a flat fee, then we're moving to a flat fee. Hey, Pat, and right on the right screen. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. That's okay. All right. You're screwing it. You're sharing the Facebook. There we go. Okay. We good? Yep. Okay. So, um, like I said, if we're, if we're, if we're not starting off with a flat fee because the leads are inconsistent, then you can start off with paper lead. I don't want to start off with commission. Like I, I just like avoid commission. I don't even make that be an option. When people ask about it, like, hey, and they'll always ask because it's like, it's, it's no risk, right? We already talked about that. There's no risk. So when they ask about that, uh, we're like, that's not how we do it. We, and I would tell a story, like we have true stories um, in ours where it's like, hey, we did that. We got burned. We're never doing that again. It's nothing against you. You seem like a really trustworthy, nice person, but our business does not operate that, any, that way anymore. We refuse to do that. We would love to work with you, but that's not an option for us. Right. So get that takeaway in there as a part of it. Let them know when you say something like this, it changes the whole entire dynamic of the negotiation. When when they know that you are not that, that you're going to walk away. Right. When they know that's in your pocket, that you have the ability to walk away when you say something like that. Hey, I'd love to work with you, but that's not an option for us. Like they're, you're basically saying like. Like you. This is, there's things that are going to be a breaking point for me, right? So you need to get that in there and it's important to do it in a way, it's an art, right? You need to do it in a way where you don't come across as a jerk, right? So, um, so when to start charging, I think is going to be related to this. This is in the group. This right here is a valuable baseline resource of like what things can cost. So this is a few years old. It's not going to be exactly right. Our leads are going to be way more valuable than home advisors are. If you were to go into the group and go to more and then go to files, you'll see this like home advisor pricing PDF. And if you download it and open it, you'll find this. So I referenced this a lot on previous calls. This is kind of like the low and the high. So your lead should be somewhere in between this. Uh, I wouldn't be afraid to go to the high because these leads compared to what we produce organically are they're garbage and they're shared with like four or five people but it can give you a baseline to make sure that you're not undercharging too much. So for instance, if this lead cost $60 for a sunroom and or patio enclosure build, and I'm producing on average 10 of those a month, and I know that I should be like $600 a month, like that's where I can set my flat fee. And if I'm doing paper lead, then I know that I can do at least $60. And I, and I would probably take it to 75 or 70 at least. Like that's the high, right? So um, this will give you a baseline for how you should, what you should be charging. Okay, so um, let's go back over here to our, that stupid thing can get off my screen for a second. Hang on, there we go. All right, um, how much to charge? We just talked about that. When to start charging, how to charge them. So um, we use Stripe, that's what we use. Um, some like pros and cons, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Stripe has within it, Stripe has ACH built in. Sometimes it can be hard to get your business owners to agree to ACH because they want their credit card points, but we always, I always try to push for it. The downside is with Stripe, for whatever reason, they have the world's longest wait time 
on getting your money. So it's like, it can be like two weeks, 10 days to two weeks, but it's $5. And when you're doing this at scale, if you're doing hundred thousand dollars a month, like that 3% can be, you know, $3,000 a month that you're paying to Stripe. Whereas if you're doing ACH, it might be like a hundred dollars, right? So it can be a huge difference. And at the end of the year, like, um, you know, that, that's like $36,000 or, you know, maybe $35,000 that, that you're saving. So you can look at ACH. You can also set up ACH with, with banks. Um, you could push this and just be like, Hey, this is, this is how we accept payment. We, we have also, um, some clients who send checks, which can be frustrating. And it kind of like messes up our, um, ability to calculate receivables. We're like, okay, did this person pay? We're like Stripe, everything is there for us. Uh, Stripe has amazing customer service, but they are a little bit, you know, I mean, I guess it's the industry standard, but it just feels expensive to me. Um, look, if you're on Stripe and you can get your clients to do it, look for that ACH within Stripe. They charge $5 maximum um, for, for that transaction. Venmo, some of our clients are paying us on Venmo or Zelle. Um, so those are both free from your, and I think from both ends maybe, um, and they're pretty quick. Uh, I think we also have a, a, a client who pays us on Cash App as well. So one of the strategies that I highly recommend, especially like for scalability, we have designed our entire business to scale, right? So that that's like, we're looking for every way to make things easier. So what we do is we collect payment on the first of the month, right? That's what we do. If someone comes in on the 15th, we prorate to the first. So we'll take less the first month and then prorate to the first. Because I want to be able to just look down once a month and be like, okay, paid, paid, paid. This person didn't pay. We got to reach out to this person. We have an issue. I know some of you guys want to like kind of manage it. It's also when you collect on the first of the month, you essentially have a budget for the entire month. You know what you have to work with. It's easier to kind of calculate your cash flow if it's all kind of coming at it once and being like, okay, this is what it is. These are what my expenses are going to be for the month. I know exactly what I have to work with and I can adjust my expenses to make sure that. I leave the amount of money that I want to take out of my business for the end of the month. So um, I think that is a lot easier to manage. Okay. Um, so those were the three questions that I thought you guys may ask. So let's go in. I have a couple um, other strategies that I want to share, um, but I want to make sure we get through questions first and I'll, I'll circle back to, to more strategies here on. So what I'm going to go into last is like some actual strategies on like, how to find the, the prospects and, and a little bit of how to pitch them and, and like how to open up that initial conversation. But uh, let's jump into a couple questions out there. Jeff, we got questions. How about do you send invoices? How do you deal with that? Um, so uh, we use PandaDoc when we have to send invoices. If you use Stripe, there's like automatic invoicing that can go out, which is nice. And you can actually brand it to yourself. So for those of you guys that are like, subscribing lead snap customers, you guys, that invoice comes from, from Stripe, right? So um, it's getting sent out with our logo and it's coming through, like, I, I think it has our email address on it. So that's an easy way to do it. But PandaDoc is great. Um, I think um, I looked for, I, I was able to get some kind of discount. If you search around, if you're into Panda, if you're like looking for that. So they do invoicing and that also does like the, um, the signature, like the, like, uh, just like when you're signing like real estate documents or something like that, where it has like the, the real legit signature that has some backing behind it. So that's awesome. We use it in our agency as well, because like everyone who works for us signs a uh, independent contractor agreement or, um, you know, like we're getting ready to move a lot of our, uh, some of our contractors over to be like actual employees, but that's really good too, because I can just click and it will like, fill out all these different variables with the person's information and make the document like personalized to them. So it just takes me a second to send this. And then, and then like all the stuff is like legally binding with their signatures. Um, what about 1099s? What would you do if a client asked you to sign a 1099 or something like that? Um, yeah, we've done that. Uh, we, you know, there's a few people that have asked for 1099s and, and we've sent that, that out. Um, at one point in my life, I was a tax accountant, but I don't remember all the implications of it. Now I have an accountant. Jeff, do you do you have any sage knowledge on that from being an attorney? That's not legal legal advice. Yeah, I don't. I I would just I wouldn't volunteer it if they're if they insist. Then cool, but I wouldn't volunteer it. Yeah, also talk to your accountant and see like 
understand the implications of, of what that is when you do that. I, I don't, I think it's only been a couple of times someone has asked for that for, for us. All right. Spencer has a question. How do you determine a rent increase? Yeah. So um, what I want to see when I do a rent increase is like some sustainable um, lead flow, right? So if we started out at 30 leads a month and we came up with a price based on 30 leads a month, and then it goes to like 50 leads for one month, then I would be um, like, that's not necessarily the time, but if, it, if it's like maybe a couple months, like the, the next month, it's like 55 and it's really starting to ramp up, then I'm going to, then I'm going to do it. And, and, and I like to not nickel and dime my people. I don't want to have them redlined, right? Because when you redline them, like if you have a bad month and like it's, the relationship is, is, is affected by that. So you don't want to have them like right at the most that they'll pay. Like whatever it is you think it's worth, we'll dial it back a little bit and it gives us a little bit of margin and um, it builds up goodwill. Uh, but, you know, when the lead increases and I can tell that like by looking at my home advisor sheet of like, okay, this is the baseline or if, I'm, if I know the niche really well, this is the baseline of what these leads should be worth. And we're well above that and we've been above that. It's like, it's time to have a conversation. I know that I, I've preached this in the past. There's some real trigger words that when you go to have this conversation that you should be using. I think um, you want to, the idea is really to, to get the other person in, in your shoes. Let them see it from, from your point of view. And a way that you can do that that's powerful is use the word fair, right? Like, hey, um, Jeff, uh, you know, we've been putting in a, a lot of work to, to grow the site. And because of that, we have, um, we're producing a lot more, more leads. And um, what I, what I want to do is I want to adjust the price. I just want to keep things fair, right? So we're sending you a lot more work than we originally had. And the way we've set this up is so that when, um, you know, when you, when we send you more value that we get paid for this additional value. And we just, we're not looking to, um, you know, um, give away the stuff just like you do when you go and do X service at this, at so and so like, so if it's, um, you know, landscaping, just like when you go and do landscaping, you want to get paid for it. So this is like putting them in your shoes. We worked really hard to create this. So we just want what's fair. And we think that this is what fair is. We think this is what the fair market value is. Here's what we've sent you. Here's what we think the cost per lead should be. So this is what it is. And I'm going to dial it back just a little bit to make sure that it that it's cool, right? So um, that's kind of how I would do it. Um, Ari, Prospect. when you go Prospect ahead. Is asking, do we have a billing system inside of the CRM? Uh, we do not, but we're going to be adding that. We're, we have a big integration that's coming for, it's going to be through, um, originally it's going to be through Stripe and we're going to, um, it's, we're going to allow you to manage all your clients through our system. And then um, there's going to be a time. I think we're looking at um, the, um, potentially the end of Q2 or Q3. It is on the top of our roadmap. I know there, that you could be essentially um, doing paper lead through our system and saying like, okay, this is a qualified lead, bill them this amount. We could also do like lead cost averaging where you could say, hey, um, this is my niche. And this is like, what I would really want is to have like alerts and notifications so that if um, we say like, okay, we know that leads in the plumbing niche are selling for this much. And if you get too far out of whack, I want the system to say like, hey, you're more than 10% from the average. And it would be really cool if we could find a way to do it where other users are driving the average cost. So that way you can like know like, hey, everyone else is selling these for $40 and you're only selling them for 25. And you get an alert from the system that says like, you should probably adjust this, right? So that's kind of where my mind's going with it. Um, we haven't started it yet, but it is, it is on a roadmap. And we just have that last question by Ari. He's going to throw us on a different track here. How do you name your GMBs? Um, yeah, so uh, I'm just going to, Ari, I'm just going to go through it really quick. Um, so I try to choose the, the best keyword that is associated with it, and I'll put some branding into it. So like, for instance, if landscaping is my best keyword, I might do something like Premier Landscaping of Los Angeles to like make it not seem so lead Jenny while still getting the city and the keyword in there. And I see uh, Lisa, any integration with QuickBooks? We do not yet, but I know that if we integrate with Stripe and I know Stripe has some integrations with um, 
with QuickBooks that we may be able to kind of leverage and tie onto. You are welcome, Ari. All right, so I want to get into some selling strategies here to wrap this call up. Okay, so what are we going to do? Now we have leads coming in, right? We've built our lead gens out and it's like time to try to find someone. So as my buddy Spencer likes to call it, we have the, like our go-to is the drug dealer method, right? So what it is, and this is like, no, I'm not like supporting that life or anything, but basically what it is, is like, give somebody a taste of it. Let them try it. Let them, let them drive the car around the block. And like I said, um, like pay attention to the sales cycle with this. You want to make sure that the trial period is longer than the sales cycle because you want these people to have the opportunity to close. You want them to get out there and do some bids and find out that these are not just like tire kickers. These are real people. These are real jobs that have real value. So if they do that, then you have the sales conversation. It goes a lot different. Okay. So you give them like, Hey, um, you, you know, I'll give you this for a week. It is important. So it is important when you do this, set an end date for the trial. Don't let this be open-ended. If the leads don't flow in like they had when you tried to start up the trial, then you can adjust it. But you want to make sure that that when you do this, it lets them know that there's value to this, that you value this. And it's not, I'm not, I'm not going to let this go on forever, right? But something's going to click in their head as soon as you say that. So that's an important thing. It's also good to anchor them to a number because they'll, at some point, whether it's before the conversation or in the middle, you need to be checking in on them too. Don't just like start giving them the leads. Hey, I'm going to give you two weeks. So we're going to, we're going to talk on the 18th. We're going to talk on May 18th and that's going to be end date. And then I don't talk to them for two weeks. That's not a good idea. You want to be checking in along the way and finding out how things are going. Like you have the ability to listen to the calls, let them remind them that you're listening to the calls, right? Like, Hey, um, I heard you talking to, um, Betty the other day, and it sounds like she had a, a, a good job. And I just wanted to see how, how did that go? Did that turn into anything? Like keep reminding them of what you're sending them and letting them know that you have the ability to access what you're sending them. So they're not just like thinking they're going to make up whatever and, and negotiate however they want. Right. Okay. Um, you can stair step them to a number. So it's important if they ask, don't just be like, Hey, we'll talk about it later. I think it's a really good idea to say, look, um, this is what this is worth. We, I know like, and, and sometimes you have to ask as it act as if, but like with us, we, we know what it's worth, right? We're like, we've done this all over the country. And I know that this is worth $2,000 a month. So that's the number that we're looking for here. And they might like him and haul and have an issue and say, Hey, that's, that's more expensive than um, whatever. And it's like, there's some salesmanship that might need to show up at that point where it's like, Look, I know this may be a bigger number than than um, than what you expected or what whatever, like whatever some other SEO. But we're actually delivering like customers to you, and it's a bigger number. Like, what if I'm sending you twenty thousand dollars a month? Is two thousand dollars a big number? What if I send you a hundred thousand? Is two thousand dollars a big number? Like, you know, get those numbers in their head and, and kind of get the wheels turning on. You're just taking a small percentage of of what you're sending them. So I, I just don't want you to back down and then you have a tougher time because they're, they're in, they get like sticker shock and they haven't had time to process this, right? So uh, those are some, some good things to do when you're setting up, when you're doing that conversation. So what are, what are the, some of the ways that you're actually gonna look for this? So let's, let's stick with landscaping, right? So I'm gonna go um, landscaping Dallas, Texas, and I will share my screen. I realize I'm not sharing it. All right, so. How am I going to find people to reach out to? One of my favorite ways is I love looking for people that are actually like, these people are already paying. These people running Google ads, they're paying. And it's my strong opinion that the lead quality and the lead quantity associated with this area is not nearly as good as it is associated with this area. So if you can get these people to, uh, if you can get these people into a conversation and get them on a trial, I think you're going to have a, a ton of luck with um, moving them after they've, especially with the tracking and stuff that is built in the lead snap where every call and every form submission is recorded and you can give your clients access to it and see it and be completely transparent with them. That's really valuable for the sales process. If they're not logging in because they're a landscaper who doesn't know how to use a computer, you can export it. You could take a picture of it and say like, hey, here's what we sent you over. 
Um, so just this is these people have already decided that they need to pay for business. So those are great people. Home advisor is another great source. So this maybe can be viewed as controversial. You could hire somebody from home advisor to come out, especially if you need the service, if you need landscaping, have the conversation. Maybe you even pay for the service. That would make it less controversial, right? Get them out there and be like, hey, I know that you're paying for stuff on home advisor. I have something that is going to be way better, um, you know, way better quality. It's not going to be shared. So that's another per, uh, another way um, out the strategy with the heat maps. So I've gone over that a bunch of times in the past. That is a phenomenal strategy to kind of lay on new prospects, but that's different than if you have a, a producing lead gen that you're trying to sell, right? So maybe you could kind of mix that strategy and that, that would still work really well, but going into a Facebook group, joining one. So imagine there's one for landscaping that I join and it's all these landscapers from all over the place. What if I made a post that said, I, a lead comes into me and it's like, hey, um, you know, I'm looking to have like, four trees removed and all this other stuff. What if I went into a landscaping group and I said, I'm looking to have four trees removed and whatever it is that this person wanted in this area, can anyone make any recommendation for me? A lot of times people that are from other cities will recommend, or if there's somebody there, they'll, they'll start to like post their stuff in there and you can reach out to them and you can give them this lead. And this is a really good way to get your foot in the door and open up that conversation. Okay, so um, what else did I have on here? Um, so the script to close that 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 I've used in the past, and um, you know, I view this sales process as trying to get people out of their way because I know what a difference what we do can make for these people, and I also know that they're scared of me, right? And I know that like if I can get them to just like do a trial then the leads are real and they get to keep the stuff from the leads. So you're, you don't need to, don't, don't go in. If you have a producing lead gen, don't go in trying to close the person. That's a, that's a big mistake in my mind. Start off by just getting them on a trial. The trial will close them. If you can get, if you have a producing lead gen and it's producing good quality leads and you can measure them and show what's, it's really obvious what, what it's, it goes really from being a sales negotiation, but a lot of these guys are going to be resistant to um, even going on a trial because they're like, what's the catch? They, they've never heard of that before, right? I'm going to give you like free leads. They like, they don't know what that is. And they're going to be like skeptical to, to try that. So we have a story that we've used and it's worked really well. So this is what it is. And it's with the intention to just get them out of their own way. Because if I can do that, then I'm like, we have the potential to change their business, which can change their life, change their family, all, all this amazing stuff, right? So here it is, is um, um, let's say I have a um, pool cleaning company and I'm trying to have a conversation with Jeff and I call Jeff up and I'm like, hey, Jeff, um, my name's my name's Patrick. And, um, you know, I started I, I, I started this uh, pool cleaning thing, this pool cleaning website with this um, guy who runs this pool cleaning company. And, you know, he's going through some personal issues and, um, you know, the company folded before it even got started. And I'm a website company, I'm a marketing company. I just need, these people are getting upset with me. I just need somebody to take these few days for like the next 10 days, just so I can figure out uh, what to do with them. Because I, these people are pissed off. I, I don't want it if you close, I don't totally, is that something you out with? So that has worked very, very well. And, um, you know, there is like a, a piece of me that's like, hey, man, this isn't really honest, but there is also like um, a piece of me that's like, this is going to change this guy's life if I can get him to understand that this is real because he doesn't, he, there's no way that he can understand this like golden egg that I'm trying to present him with um, because that, that's, it's, it's completely, the, most of the people that are calling him up are like, hey, Hey, uh, Jeff, let me, let me tell you what, man, give me $500 a month. I'll get you on the, the front of Google. I'll optimize your GMB. You're going to be, you're, it's going to be so amazing, right? Like when I say, Hey, just take these leads, they'll come right to you. Like, they're like, what? Like, is it, like that doesn't sound, I, I don't know what that is. I, they, they're confused. You know, like if some, if a stranger walked up to you on the street and said, Hey, um, would you take this $20 from me? Like some of you are going to be like, 
like what hey what whoa whoa what what is this right like that's kind of how they feel but they're not giving away, you're not giving away like straight cash to them so it's even and, and you're calling them on the phone so um you've got to get them out of your own way to be able to see this and you can test and, and play with it and find out what works best for you but um I would also recommend that you choose your words wisely. Like if you're doing things that everybody else is doing, like, can I speak with the business owner? I'm, you're wasting your time. You might get somebody, but they hear that stuff constantly. So I think what Patrick is saying is be creative, be inventive. You know, you don't have to straight up lie. I mean, if you're working on the website, you have an intention of, of having a client for it. So you were working with, on it for a client. It's like, are you my client or not? Like, you got to get them out of their own way, but you have to get out of your own way as well and be very mindful of the language that you use. Patrick. Right. Yeah. So I have a question there. Uh, so trying to get the right customer can be tricky, right? Like, because you mentioned that at the beginning that you need to work with someone that answers the phone, that gives a good service and all that, right? What I found is the the people that have already someone like uh, the front desk answering uh, the phone and making the, uh, the appointments and all that are the people that are really trying to grow their business, right? Mm. But that presents itself a problem that that's like a gatekeeper, right? Like uh, she's not the decision maker. So do you have any strategy on how to go through that so we can talk to the business? Or, even if we give the leads, okay, how are we going to talk to her or like- I was just yeah. having this conversation with somebody a couple of days ago, Edwin, and, and what I've had success with is when I go, when I, when I call somebody like that and they answer, I, I say, hey, can I speak with somebody in marketing? And, and they'll be like, oh, uh, well, actually that's me, ha, ha, ha. And it's like, oh, well, hey, you know, and then it's easier to kind of get past them because they, I don't know, for some reason, that particular line I've had really good success with, even though it's not any kind of a genius different line. It's just for some reason when it throws them off guard and they don't feel, I think, confident enough to, they know you're different from like the home advisor people they can hang up on, but they're not really sure who you are. So they kind of listen, at least in my case, they listen to what I, I, I say and I, oh, well, you know, I have these leads coming in, blah, 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 blah. I give them my spiel. And then I, I try to always set them up like they're going to be the hero. It's like, oh, you're in charge of marketing? Man, you, man, I got to touch with the right person because the, you're, you're the owner of the company or your boss or whatever. He's going to love you after this. Like, listen to what I have to say. You know, I always yeah. make them the hero. Very good. <laughs> I try, I, Patrick, I try what you said. Like, uh, I, I pretended to, to be working with uh, another owner but in reality i wasn't <laughs> and i sent the leads and at the end and, and that was me i felt so bad that i i didn't continue that i said I, i'm lying here and i don't want to build my business uh, out of that. but uh, yeah, that, that, that was just me so i'm not saying you don't do it or anything like that i found another customer with another way but uh, it was just curious that you mentioned that so. <laughs> right so, 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 i mean it's 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 a personal choice and um you know it's, it's wrong it's, yeah for sure yeah it's uh, something that on, on like I sure. mentioned on some level I struggled. I think a really good thing that you can do before you even get into that line, one of the first things you should do is like, um, Jeff, if you do, um, do filter cleaning, like I'll ask them that. Are you, do you, are you, are you doing this in Los <laughs> Angeles? And like Glenda, I'm, I'm qualifying them. I'm going to ask them a couple of before, like I'm getting through at like the, when we answer the phone from a phone number, we don't know the first few seconds are like, is this garbage that I'm going to hang up on? And when I get them past that point and they kind of let their defenses down a little bit, then we can get into that conversation. As far as like the gatekeeper, here's what you do. I think this is like a, a killer method with the gatekeeper. So before you start passing this stuff off, um, like go and have a conversation with the gatekeeper and she'll be like kind of lukewarm and, and um, she or he, and they'll um, just establish yourself and, and say like, hey, I've got, I've got stuff coming in. Is this something you're interested in? And I, I don't want anything for it now, but like, I need someone to take this stuff. Can you guys just take it if I get one? So then when, the, when a call comes and you take the call, you'd be like, okay, what are you looking to have done? Okay, get their information. This is the address. This is the phone number. The call comes in, you're just gonna the person that's calling in for like pulling, okay. Um, you know, the, the um, cost to clean the pool is going to vary based on like 
the size of the pool, how many trees are around it. Um, is this like a salt pool, even the shade factor? So I am not the pool cleaning master, but I'm gonna have one of our estimators give you a call back and they can probably actually come out there. So I'm gonna, but I just need to get some information so I know that I pass it on to the right person. So I'm gonna get down their information and then I'm gonna call this person and be like, hey, uh, James just called, here's his phone number, here's his address. Do you want this? Do you wanna take this? And you guys can go get this job. If I do that to them five or six, seven times, like at some point she's gonna be like, uh, I need to have you talk to the business owner. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's 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 totally cool. I'll talk to the business owner. Cool. Like, if you just deliver value to this person from the beginning, that is such a pattern interrupt. If you're if you're giving them like legit leads, what you have because you have like a ranking site that's producing, it's it's super easy. If you like, you don't have to try to sell them from day one. Just give it to somebody that's in this in in the kind of the chain there, and then you can be like. Like she's going to be talking to the person, the business owner, right? And she can be in their ear like, hey, this Patrick guy is, you know, he sent us 15 leads this week. Like, like, hey, do you want to continue this? Or you can even, um, you know, you can even send over an email after a little while and be like, hey, um, I, just, I just want to touch base with you guys. Are you guys getting some value? Here's what we sent over. Here's a spreadsheet with all the stuff that we sent over with the names, the phone numbers, the addresses. Some of these jobs are probably going to, have, have closed. If you've sent over like 15 or 20, they should be closing in this industry. They should be closing like a third, you know, you got to pay attention to the sales cycle, but if you give it enough time and you send over enough leads money in their pocket, and that's going to be a complete pattern interrupt. That's going to get their attention and, and, and get you the conversation you need. Patrick, last question. I know I'm talking a lot, then I need to get some room. I'm but sure these the, questions are great for everyone, man. Yeah. The example you like where you showed, uh, you went to Dallas, right? Uh, do you still go to those big cities? Uh, you know that you have teach the due diligence, the method, but do you still consider going like uh, into those big cities or you just keep uh, doing the due diligence in terms of if you know that it's going to be easy to rank, right? there's someone that is maybe paying already Google ads and all that, or because here's the thing, I have some, people that can give me a GMB in those cities uh, for free, they're friends. Um, but I'm hesitant to, you know, how much I'm going to invest in ranking the website, uh, the GMB. So yeah. Um, what, so, what is your advice? Do you still do it or what, what do you do? So what I do and what you do, depending on where you are, may be different things. I'm not afraid of any city. Now we've got our chops. Like we're like we're, if we go into, we're in Dallas, we're in Chicago, we're in LA, we're in like big markets, Vegas, Phoenix, like we're in big markets all over the country. And there's been several videos. Uh, unfortunately, we lost one of them. We failed to record, but there's been a lot of videos where we talk about a multi-map strategy and dividing the city up into sections and then sure. going after sections of the city. So that's a really good way to do it. There, there's a um, bunch of them linked in the uh, call outline that I just dropped. I watched it. I watched it. That one. It, yeah, but well, there's a bunch of them. If you look at just below the table of contents, the there's a few of them that go over multiple map strategy. Yeah, and, but but my question with that strategy would be, or, or I don't know if it's a question, but that means that you're going to invest more money, right? Like because now you're going to have to rank like two or three GMBs instead of just one. That's right. right, but you're going to get more money too, right? Oh. There, there's okay. there's yeah. an upside. Okay. I would say like, maybe don't, don't try to go after big cities. If you're at less than like, um, you know, 15 K a month, um, like get run around the bases a bunch of times. Get the I'm sorry. You put out, you put out, what did you just say? Uh, you... don't, don't go after big cities unless you're, you're at like, you know, 10, 15, $20,000 a month in, in recurring from like beating up on the smaller cities, oh, right? Okay. There's some advantages to going after the bigger cities, but like there's been times where I'm like looking at some of these markets we're in, like in Chicago, we, we still haven't really, um, it hasn't been that long, but we, we haven't had things click in Chicago. And I'm like, man, we could have run this thing up the flagpole at like six or seven other cities. But I know that like Chicago, maybe that's going to be 20 K a month for us when we get that one to click. Right. So there's a lot to be said for, for, for a lot of these smaller markets. And even when you choose a bigger market, I would always be dividing it into smaller markets, right? Like if you're going after Chicago, then you're going to want to split off like Naperville, Schaumburg, like all the cities that make up those like good areas, the good suburbs that have 
like maybe an, like 70, 80,000 people, 100,000 people, like you can build a separate site for those and just target those. So now it's not like you're going after the entire city of Chicago. You're choosing to be relevant in this sub market and then you choose another one and then you choose another one and then pretty soon you got the whole city cornered, right? So that's kind of what we do. We'll build one that's for the entire city, like Chicago, but then we'll, we'll build a bunch of other sites that are just hitting those smaller cities. Definitely start off with the smaller cities in the beginning, though, and, and, and do that due diligence to make sure that you're not, that there's not some like, you know, um, that Mike Tyson's not hanging out in like Dayton, Ohio, right? And like beating up on a bunch of people because that, that, that exists. It's not necessarily true that just because the city's bigger, that it's going to be tougher or because the city's smaller, it's going to be weaker. There's, there's certainly anomalies in both directions. And um, even like what's the average here is, is, is a good question to ask and, and understand. Thank you. You're welcome, Edwin. Great question. I would just add to, add to that real quick that there are amazing opportunities out there. I think, you know, a lot of people get kind of jumbled up with due diligence, but if you do it right, like just the due diligence, I'm not an expert at it necessarily, but in the times that I've gone and done it, I, I see so many opportunities. It's crazy. So, I mean, just, just keep doing it, keep honing your craft and you'll find the right opportunities. For sure. If somebody it, tells you that this is like, if someone says that, Hey, this is, this is dead. Legion is like, that's, that's not that's not real. That's not a thing. Uh, can I share how I went through the gatekeeper and one of the yeah, so absolutely. If you got a if you got a pro tip in there that can help the rest of us, I'm, so, I'm all yeah. ears. So yeah, I was having a hard time uh, renting a plumbing. Uh, uh, I only have two sites. I'm kind of new on this, but uh, uh, so I joined the network that they buy the leads and they sell it to Home Advisor. So I record the the the, the calls. And I wrote down the name of the companies that were uh, the, the, the ultimate buyer. So because this is my local area, I went and talked to them or I called them and I said, hey, I'm the one producing the leads. Would you like to work with me directly instead of paying someone else in the middle? And say, yes. And we had a meeting. And <laughs> so I just joined to so I can know exactly who's already paying for the leads or interested in the leads. Once I, got the, once I got the name and the information, I stopped sending the leads to the network because they don't pay you well. It's, they pay you very right. little. But I got that information and then I went in because I recorded, I showed the recording and I made a deal with them. So I don't know if that works. I would love to, uh, Edwin, I'd love to dive into that more and, and kind of like make a, a training out of that. Um, sure. Yeah, that, that sounds like an awesome strategy. Will you just send me a message and let's, Let's set up a time for you and me to get on a on a one on one call because that could be a that sounds like a pretty deadly strategy and um, I I personally believe that that Home Advisor is a terrible company I've heard countless stories of um, my clients talking about how they've had you know so many issues with them so um, giving like finding a, a better way to serve these people is is, is awesome so sure awesome 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 strategy there cool. Okay. All right, guys, we are almost at an hour and a half. So I'm going to I'm gonna wrap this call up. If you guys have additional questions, just throw them in the Facebook group. And um, we still can't figure out the streaming. So we should have this video posted, if not tonight, then tomorrow morning. Um, like I said last week, these videos are free, but um, you don't have to pay anything to watch them. But what we ask for is feedback. So I'd love to hear once we post the, the video in Facebook, because these comments will all disappear. Once we post them in Facebook, circle back, put your uh, your biggest takeaway on here, what, what it is, what you guys are getting from this. And you know, if there's something that you want to see more of, feel free to throw that in too. I appreciate you guys. Take the next seven days to um, to create some wins, right? Let's let's see. I'd love to see new faces next week. I love seeing new old faces. Um, congrats to all those guys that had the killer wins uh, at the beginning of this call. Uh, Sarah, Alfredo, um, who else do we have there? Brian Jones, Spencer. Spencer, of uh, course. What's that? Spencer, of course. Spencer, of course. That I mean, look, look what, like when we have the weekly wins, look what it does to your business, right? So what I'm asking you guys is to take the actions to move your business. I'm begging you, like, do something to help yourself over the next seven days. All right. You guys have an awesome week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and Patrick. We'll see you in the group. You're welcome. Thank you. All right.
you guys later. Bye. Everybody. Thank you.